Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and it's time for round 10 of our Moto3 career mode. It's time for the German GP, it's time for the Saxon Ring. So here we are then in 10th position for the CIP Green Power KTM and away we go. Oh I jumped the start! Oh can you believe it? We've jumped the start here in the Saxon Ring. The championship leader has just made an absolute blunder. Let's get in and do it straight away then I guess. Get this over and done with. Let's hopefully we keep it in nice and tight. Keep it in. Keep it in. We've done it. Beautifully done. Oh my goodness. We dropped to 18th position. What a disaster. Well, tell you what, actually not too bad when you think about it. We actually only lost 8 positions. And we're soon clawing them back now as we go on the right hand side for Amiga. Getting really, really tight here. Oh, someone's getting pushed off the track. I think it's Ryusi Yamanaka. Someone went wide to the right hand side. It's absolutely kicking off here in the 10th round of this championship as we now position ourselves ahead of the MT rider of Mario, uh, excuse me, uh, Ryusi Yamanaka as Mario Angie is ahead of us with Ethan Otola as well. But bloody hell, what a start to this one. Absolute drama to start this first lap here in the Saxon Ring GP as Mario Angie gets a massive whack for his troubles there as we went on the left hand side for turn 9. The left of many, many left handers here in the Saxon Ring. But now going on to the right hand side, I'm using power setting 3 for now. Maybe we'll drop it down to the second power setting. But for now, ooh, a track limit warning. I don't fancy another penalty here. Actually, we only got the track limit warning when we bumped into Ryus, uh, Ryusi Yamanaka, but oh, lifting it up ever so slightly there as Daniel Holgado just drifted ahead of us ever so slightly. Well, now things can finally calm down as we're going to start the second lap here into the Quackenberg. Foggia leads the way with Marrera in second position, Massia in third, Mino in seventh, and John McPhee ahead of us in eighth position. Could see the uh, Husqvarna up there once again like he was in Catalonia last time out. So, of course... Catalonia being a bit of a calamity as we mentioned in the previous video. I'm hoping that we can uh, sort things out today and hopefully have a good result. Of course, a bad, bad result for us. Not scoring any points in the last Grand Prix. We don't want to be surrendering any more points to Tatsuki Suzuki. Suzuki just a little bit further ahead of us, as you can see on screen. Just further ahead of Chami Artiga. Suzuki in fourth position as things stands. But Marrera is now your new race leader. The young Brazilian. Up into first position goes the number 10. Massio in second. You see Foggy there launching it up on the inside into turn 7. Looks like he's got it done from this perspective. And I see in the timing sheets he has changed. And Foggy is now leading the way. But to the left-hand side we'll go as the big run into turn 9. This big line from turn 7 all the way up to turn 9. All on the left-hand side. And we'll continue up to turn 10 until the change of direction. Down into the waterfall section for turn 11. So onto the right-hand side. Keeping it nice and tight. Look at the power. We were getting out of that corner. Look at the rear tyre. What on earth has gone on wrong there with the medium rear? It's absolutely glowing red. That doesn't happen very often for me, but it's really, really screaming red right now here as we enter the Saxon curve. We're now into the final corner for the second time of asking. Got to keep it nice and tight to the apex here. Bring on the power at just the right moment to get some slipstream. Elbows to elbows almost with Andrea Mino there as we do set the fast lap of the Grand Prix. A 126 3 1 4 for the championship leader. The CIP Green Power Honda uh, KTM going very firm on the brakes around the outside of a couple of Hondas there and all the way up into fourth position. What a beautiful maneuver. What maneuver could possibly be smoother when you're doing that going into the first corner as we go to. Whoa! Whoa, that was a bit scary. Okay, hearts and mouths, ladies and gentlemen. The heart rate is still teetering around 130. I'm surprised it didn't just rock it up with the way I felt going onto that rumble strip just a moment ago. Well, into turn five. Chami Artie gets to the right hand side. Suzuki just a little bit further ahead. Mino is putting himself into the picture as well. This is certainly getting scrappy here in the Saxon ring. And I will remind you that this was recorded before the update. So I hope after the update, when we start doing the videos from now on, the AI will still be competitive. But pushing Suzuki out of the way and pushing him onto the rumble strip. That's an aggressive move from the man on board the KTM. But the Honda still stayed on board the motorcycle. And now Suzuki has a chance to regain the position going into turn 11 beyond. So we now plummet down the waterfall section, 140 miles per hour down into this wonderful corner here into the Saxon curve. Keep it nice and tight to the left hand side for the apex and get ahead of Jamma Massey and then we might even be able to move ahead of Diogo Marrera as well. Not quite close enough as we try and get pushed out a little bit wide there. I was trying to go into the left hand side and hopefully go around the outside but it just didn't happen going into the final corner. And there is Foggia into the lead. Suzuki now positioning himself ahead of us. Foggy is actually breaking away ever so slightly after that little bit of contact with Marrera just a moment ago. So lap four of seven as things are going to get heated here as Foggy went extremely slow there into the first corner and Jamma Masu is down 
the Red Bull KTM IO rider who's having fantastic form in real life at this point in the real world is not having a good time here today as uh, Dennis Foggia gets absolutely whacked from the KTM there as well. Oh, Foggia around the outside. How about that one? That was beautiful from Foggia. Really well played there from the young Italian. That was fantastic as we now go into the left hand side for turn seven. Not often I can give the AI credit in MotoGP 22 but I certainly will give credit where credit is due here today. On well, out to the left hand side we go. Turn eight is beckoning us. Good stuff so far in the slipstream with power setting two. It's certainly going to be a ding dong of a battle that we hoped for, which we envisioned here today in the Saxon ring. Turn 10 navigated pretty well. Turn 11 to go down the hill. Can we get into waterfall section? Foggia pulling away ever so slightly. The Honda certainly has the extra legs and oomph compared to the KTM. Or now into the left hand side for the Saxon curve for turn 12. Running it deep. Tatsuki Suzuki, the perfect wingman to Foggia, the perfect teammate. But don't forget. That's your runner-up in the championship right now, ladies and gentlemen. Tatsuki Suzuki should be where Foggia is. Foggia should be doing the business for Tatsuki Suzuki, for Tatsuki-san, because he is the runner-up in the championship. But power setting three enabled for now, because I want to try and get back at Foggia. Lap five and seven, things are getting pretty close. We've got a couple more laps to attack. I want to learn where we can go for the move, and look at Suzuki. Once again, the perfect wingman as Xavi Artigas has gone down. The second race in succession for the young Spaniard, not going too well for him right now, but of course a collision with him and Foggia into the first corner in Catalonia took him out of uh, last race's contention, but now it seems to be a bit of a mistake going into the first corner here in the Saxon ring. So now for the left hand side, heart rate is pretty high here in the German GP, throat is beginning to get a bit of a workout now because the commentary is certainly getting intense, but I'm losing touch to Dennis Foggia, so we really need to pick up the pace here, get into the left hand side and begin our attack going into 10 beyond, so into turn 8 we'll go a little bit wider, the rubber strip is down, oh no, championship leader, oh this is an absolute catastrophe, oh it's a, oh, it's a dilemma, it's an absolute disaster, heads in hands ladies and gentlemen, oh my god that was a horrific crash going into turn 8, oh can you believe it, it's a Saxon ring setback ladies and gentlemen, that is a disaster. We need to get back on the bike, but I don't think we're going to get any points. It's We're so far behind, it's over. Oh, and the bike won't start. It's a DNF for the first time. Well, after an absolutely anticlimactic ending for this video, Grant is down into turn 8 and will not be acquiring points for the second race in succession. The championship has been blown wide open here today. Foggia wins from Suzuki and Marrera takes a fantastic podium in third place, but we need to see the championship standings. So there it is guys, a championship lead which was around 70 points obliterated. The championship has been well and truly blown wide open and the lead is down to 23 championship points. Unbelievable. And look at the team championship and that's changed as well. The complete dynamic of Moto3 has been completely changed. It is now an eight-point championship lead to the Leopard Racing Honda. No words. What a crazy race. Great race until that crash and unfortunately blowing points once again. But guys, cannot wait for the next video and I hope you can't wait too. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.